Welcome to the complete Dark Matter Ultra Camo Guide for Cold War. I'm going to go through absolutely everything you need to know to fast and efficiently unlock this mastery camo, as well as in-depth tips and tricks to advance through some of the more difficult and tedious challenges within this camo grind. As always, on screen, in the description, and throughout the video, there's going to be timestamps and chapters, so you can easily access any part of the guide that you need the most help with. And if you ever need to come back to this video for a refresher in any of the challenges you're doing, you can just skip straight to that part of the video. As we go through the camo challenges, you will see a graphic on screen that will show the challenge we are talking about, each weapon category that is involved within that challenge, what camo category this challenge is unlocked in, the amount required to complete the challenge, the overall difficulty rating, and that scale goes as super easy, easy, medium, hard, and pain as well as the weapon level that this challenge is unlocked at. These graphics you'll be seeing are going to be easy to understand and very streamlined, so there's going to be no nonsense when we're talking about camo challenges, just the best tips and tricks to complete them. Now let's talk about making the camo grind as efficient as possible. This will allow you to unlock camos at an extremely accelerated rate. The fastest way to unlock camos is going to be having your weapon level as high as possible. The reason this is a thing is because the higher weapon level your weapon is, the more camo challenges you will have unlocked and the more you can simultaneously work on at the same time, as well as the better access to higher stat attachments you will have, making your gun overall a better performing weapon. The fastest way to level up your weapon is going to be taking advantage of double weapon XP weekends and double weapon XP tokens. While double weapon XP is active, I highly recommend focusing on leveling up your gun and kind of putting camo challenges on the back burner. I recommend this because it is so much easier once you have all the camo challenges unlocked just to grind out multiple camo challenges at the same time and unlocking a gold gun in three hours instead of seven or eight. If you are a player that is wanting both Dark Aether and Dark Matter, and you are committed to both of the camo grinds, I highly recommend taking advantage of Zombie Double Weapon XP, since you can level up a weapon to its max weapon level in only 45 minutes during Double Weapon XP, where the more players in the game of zombies there are, the higher XP rates you are getting. I highly recommend if you have a second controller, split screening, or if you have a second console, having your console join with split screens so there's two, three, or four players in the game that are AFK, and you're the only one getting all the XP. This will also speed up the rate that you level up your weapon. I know a lot of people aren't zombie fans and don't like zombies, so if you're one of those people who like to stick to multiplayer, play Nuketown 24-7 or the best game mode and maps you excel at, because the better you do in multiplayer, the more XP you will be getting towards your gun. And if you're good at Fireteam Dirty Bomb, double weapon XP weekends are incredible to level up your weapon. One thing I did forget to mention is that in the description there's going to be a playlist titled the Full Dark Matter and Dark Ether Camel Guide. This playlist will not only have specific weapon guides for weapons you may be struggling with, but it also has the Full Dark Ether Camel Guide as well as some of the Plague Diamond Guides, and eventually we'll have this guide as well, so it will have every single thing you need for DM Ultra all in one place. Now we shall proceed into the camo guides. The first challenge you will experience within Cold War is the eliminations. Now the eliminations just don't count as kills this year. If you inflict damage on an enemy and get the assist, because we are going back to the Black Ops 4 team based score system, that will count as an elimination. Keep in mind that this will not carry over to future challenges, just specifically this one. Also, you don't need to worry about completing the elimination challenges, because with how the camel grind goes, you will have finished all your eliminations before you have completed the rest of the camo challenges. The second most common camo category for bullet weapons you will experience is going to be headshots. This just requires you to kill an enemy while shooting them in the head. If you are a player that struggles with headshots, it might be good to slow down your game and focus on aiming for the heads and taking that extra second just to lift your crosshair to get that headshot. 
Now this challenge isn't hard, but it can get tedious for weapons like the assault rifles, LMGs, and TAC rifles because you need 100 per weapon. You will get headshots naturally, however, it is faster to focus on aiming for the heads at all times until the challenge is complete, that way you're not worrying about it later in weapon progression, as well as in hardcore game modes regardless of the distance and regardless of what weapon you're using. It is a one-shot headshot. Bloodthirsties can be a struggle sometimes, and in other situations they can also be a breeze. If you don't know what a bloodthirsty is, it is getting 5 kills in a single life without dying, having all of your kills come from the bullet weapon that you are working on, regardless of if it's a sniper, attack rifle, or an LMG. If you end up getting a kill with a secondary, a weapon you pick up off the ground, a piece of equipment, a field upgrade, or a score streak, this will disrupt the challenge and will cancel all progression. The easiest way to complete bloodthirsties is just to focus on 5 kills in a single life. Yes, you will complete bloodthirsties naturally through other camo progression, however, just play the game style that you excel at, whether that's camping, holding power positions, camping objectives, rushing, spawn trapping, whatever you need to do to get five kills in a single life. The hardest category for this challenge is snipers, what I recommend playing on any of the combined arms mosh pit playlists, kind of camping back, spawn trapping, and getting your five kills that way. Just keep rotating and moving so you're not staying in one spot because if you keep killing enemies in the same spot, they're eventually going to pick up where you are and then just get an easy kill on you. Long shots are incredibly easy in this game. There's tons of areas on every map to get long shots, even on the smallest map, which is Nuketown. Regardless of what weapon category you are using, I recommend either playing the combined arms mosh pit just because it's huge maps and long shots will come extremely easy just because of the sheer scale of the map, as well as the Crossroads and Raid 24-7 playlist. Both maps have extremely good long shot areas. On Raid, hang out by the B flag and then just shoot from window to window or window to where the enemy is coming from from their spawn. Or you can do the Riverside on Crossroads. I recommend the Riverside on Crossroads because this spot is the equivalent of the shoot house long shot spot within Modern Warfare. There's always tons of enemies coming here and you can get easy long shots in every single game mode. And if you are struggling with SMGs going to hardcore, same thing, go to the Crossroads Riverside spot and you can get one tap, two tap kills on enemies that are standing still, trying to head glitch or trying to push towards your spawn. Another really good map if you get it in a hardcore rotation is Satellite. Go to the Dune side. If you put on a three times scope or higher, it is going to be easy long shots as long as your bullet velocity is high on hardcore one shot kills with any gun. Specifically for the M79, long shots can be pretty difficult, especially finding enemies without flak jacket. Play hardcore crossroads raid 24 seven, or if that's not in the rotation, just try to get crossroads, hang out on the cliff on seaside for the domination and just shoot down at the enemies that are coming from the A side of their spawn. I will have clips on screen of me hitting some long shots. Uh, it does require a little bit of luck, but it is easy to do nonetheless. You can do long shots with the M79 on every other map in the game. I just feel like Crossroads is the most consistent. The second most consistent would be Garrison shooting from the A to C flag in that long hallway. This next challenge I call tactical kills or effect kills. Mainly this is the floor category. This requires you to get X amount of kills while enemies are affected by stun grenades, smoke grenades, or flashbangs. If they are detected by the field upgrade, the portable mic slash portable radar, and if they're picked up on radar by UAVs and advanced UAVs, aka the harps. As long as you are fitting these requirements and have the camo challenge unlocked, every kill will count towards this challenge. The odd times that this challenge won't count is if the enemy has a portable jammer that is affecting your portable radar so it is not working. You will have to find and destroy the portable jammer so you can get kills that count again. And same thing with counter UAVs. If the enemy has a counter UAV active, even if you have a harp active, those won't count. The best way to do this is Nuketown 24-7 if you're trying to be fast and efficient, run UAVs and harps as frequently as possible, and head to the enemy spawn and throw down a portable mic. Because Nuketown's such a small map, that portable mic is going to be picking up a big radius of enemies, and every enemy that you kill while they are in that radius will count towards your effect kills. 
Most classes need 75, but with the pistols you need 25. So overall, if you're constantly using streaks, equipment, and field upgrades, you should be able to finish this challenge in the background. Very rarely would I have this challenge left when I'm done every other camel category, but if you are, just focus a little bit more on getting kills while affecting enemies. This next challenge is going to be killing enemies that are behind cover. On screen, you're going to be seeing a bunch of examples killing enemies behind cover. Now, the best way to do this is to play on objective game modes. This means enemies will always be camping by the objective and trying to head glitch by the objective. For an enemy to be counting as behind cover, they have to be close to the object they are taking cover behind, whether that is a piece of debris, a barrel, a vehicle, or any part of the map where their body is not fully visible. Keep in mind that they do have to be up close to that piece of barricade for that kill to count. If they are too far back, it won't count. Now, the best ways to get kills against enemies behind cover, once again, playing objective game modes, also playing on maps that have lots of windows and cover armada in 6v6 or 12v12 has tons of enemies that will be camping on opposite ships using the ship walls as their cover where their head and upper torso is going to be exposed on nuketown the greenhouse and the yellow house if you're shooting from window to window and enemies are trying to do window wars there those kills will all count as well as on the Crossroads Raid 24-7 playlist by the B-Flags. Both B-Flags have tons of cover, especially Raid where there is the windows where the enemies will come from their spawn, and you will get tons of kills behind cover this way. Unfortunately, with this challenge, it is luck-based. It's not so much the player's skill, it's just if the enemy is in the right place at the right time. So this challenge can be frustrating, and to be quite honest, the only way you will complete this challenge is if the enemy is trying to camp behind cover or head glitching. It is really up to the enemy on what they are doing. The point blank challenges are only for SMGs and shotguns. Super easy, objective game modes, try to get up close and personal with the enemy as much as possible. Big game modes like combined arms assault or combined arms domination are extremely good because you can get right up behind the enemy while they're trying to push the objectives and get point blanks that way. Also, you can just play Nuketown 24-7, either core or hardcore, either work. Just push the enemy spawn as much as possible. Try to run through the enemy's spawn house and kill them while they're going through or sneak up behind them if they're trying to hold a power position or an advantage point. Hardpoint on Nuketown 24-7 is the best game mode for this. In the rotation, if you get hardpoint, just go for point blanks all day. You can flank the enemy because they're so focused on getting to the hardpoint. Spawns get flipped so fast in hardpoint as well, where you'll get the odd time where you spawn behind the enemy and you can just go right up towards them and get point blanks. Can be frustrating sometimes because in hardcore, you are going to get blasted before you can even get close to the enemy if they are competent players. But if that's the trouble, then play and stick to core. Double kills are extremely easy for every weapon category except for the launchers and the M79. For bullet weapons, whether that's primaries or secondaries, objective game modes, super easy. You just push the objective and you will get double kills constantly. Nuketown 24-7, double kill central. If you're a really good player, you'll get 5, 10, maybe even 15 double kills a game, especially on long games of domination on Nuketown. Objective game modes, hang by the objective, spawn trap, play aggressive. It's the best way to get double kills. Yeah, if you do camp and hang back, you will get double kills that way, which is probably the best way to do it for snipers. Just play combined arms assault and get double kills while enemies are running through open fields on crossroads or if they're just running on the decks of Armada. Even if they're running through the streets of Miami, easy double kills that way. For launchers, it is more luck-based. The M79 is easy, the RPG is the easiest, and the Sigma you will struggle with just because of reload time. The best thing to do is to spawn trap in hardcore game modes. There is a tiny element of luck because if the enemies do have flak jacket, getting a double kill with one shot can be impossible sometimes. But if both enemies don't have flak jacket or the enemies are already weak, you can get double kills that way. A cheat way to get double kills with launchers is to play Nuketown 24-7 hardcore, run around with your launcher, and get double melee kills 
while your launcher is out. You can't use a knife, you have to hit them with the butt end of your launcher or M79. This can be a struggle sometimes, just because if you're playing in a really high SBMM lobby, the enemies aren't going to let you get close. But if you're in low SBMM, whether you reverse boost or not, it is super easy, especially if you sneak up behind the enemies and get those melee kills. This does count in the game as of now, and if for some reason it changes in the future, I'll just change it in the comment section down below. But no hate if you reverse boost for these double kills because I get it they're super frustrating. For these sniper specific challenges, we have one shot kills and kills while holding your breath. Odds are, if you're using a sniper, you're going to be holding your breath and getting one shot kills anyway, so you are going to be completing these challenges just through normal gun use. These aren't challenging requirements whatsoever, it's just playing the game how it's meant to be played. Of course, if you're a quick scoper and you're joining FaZe Clan, you might have to hold your breath just to do this challenge but it's super easy to do. Combined arms is where I did all of these challenges for the snipers. I held my breath and got one shot kills. Bada boom, bada bang. The Pellington Tundra easy one shot kills. Sometimes the M82 or the Barrett 50 cal will get hit markers. And if you are struggling and are getting frustrated, play on big maps in hardcore domination. It's one shot kills regardless of where you shoot them with the M82. So you should complete these challenges just through gun progression. Snipers, pretty easy in this game. Going into the launcher and M79 specific challenges, all of the challenges are shared between the RPG, Sigma, and M79, except for the ground streaks and air streaks. On the graphic, everything that is marked in red is where the M79 challenges are. If it's marked in white, it's either shared or just not available for the M79. Starting off, we have destroying anything. You can destroy equipment, field upgrades, or score streaks. During the launcher specific challenges, I highly recommend running the two perks, forward intel and engineer. This will allow you to see enemies' equipment and score streaks and field upgrades through walls with a red outline, as well as on your mini-map, you are going to be able to see enemy score streaks and you will have a bigger field of view on the mini-map, making it easier to pinpoint where these things are. The next challenge is going to be two kills in a single life. You will complete a lot of these while trying double kills. However, for some reason, if you're struggling, two kills in a single life, that can either be meleeing the enemy with your butt end of the launcher or shooting them with the launcher. This can be a struggle sometimes just because of flak jacket, but if you find a golden lobby in hardcore where no one's running flak jacket, you'll be getting these two kills in a single life a bunch of times. Super easy with the RPG and M79, can be a struggle with the Sigma just because of the reload speed. Destroying ground streaks requires you to destroy sentry guns, RCXDs, or even enemies that are driving vehicles. For some reason, those count. The Sigma can lock on to any of these, while the RPG has to be extremely accurate. The best way to do this is to play Fireteam Dirty Bomb, Pull your chute high up in the air and wait for an enemy to get on either a snowmobile or a dirt bike or any piece of drivable equipment. Use your perks forward intel and engineer to help you with this challenge. Pull your chute, hang in the air and wait for an enemy to get on a vehicle. While they're driving around with the Sigma, you can either lock onto them or if you have the RPG, just fly towards them and every time you destroy a vehicle and get the breakdown medal, it will count as a ground streak. This is really helpful because ground streaks aren't that popular in multiplayer and you can complete the ground streaks in a few games using this strategy. Also, extra tip, once a bomb site goes off within Fireteam Dirty Bomb, a lot of enemies will hop on the drivable vehicles and go to the next objective so you can just pick them off on their travels. Their streaks are pretty much the same thing. Anything that's flying in the air, UAV, counter UAV, UAV, harp, attack chopper, a chopper gunner, anything also counts towards airstreaks. With the Sigma, you can lock on to any of these, and with X amount of rockets, you can destroy these things. The easiest to destroy with the Sigma is going to be UAVs and counter UAVs. Same thing with the RPG. However, the RPG doesn't lock on, so you have to get lucky while shooting down airstreaks. I highly recommend with the RPG, using the RPG to destroy care packages. They are very stationary, and when they're dropping the care packages, they don't move and are easy to hit. I highly recommend doing airstreaks with the RPG within Nuketown 24-7, just because everything flies so close to the ground. The last launcher challenge that is shared between the M79 and the launchers is destroying three streaks in a single game. This, once again, is destroying any mixture of ground streaks and air streaks. Use the same strategies recommended previously, whether that's in Fireteam Dirty Bomb and destroying three people that are driving on vehicles getting breakdown medals, 
or straight up destroying RCXDs, sentry turrets, UAVs, counter UAVs, you name it. Three in a single game, 10 times for all three weapons, and you will complete the launcher specific challenges. Going to the knife specific challenges, these are a lot easier. The first challenge, backstabs. All it requires you to do is kill enemies from behind. You can either do this on Nuketown 24-7, any objective game mode, or my recommendation, combined arms assault. Spawns are super predictive, you can get behind enemy spawns really easily, and run behind enemies and just get easy kills. The next challenge is executions. You need 25 of them. My recommendations is Fireteam Dirty Bomb as well as Combined Arms Assault. Same thing on both ends. On Fireteam Dirty Bomb, get behind enemies that are shooting out in the open that aren't focused on you. Get up behind them with the knife, get an execution. Same thing with Combined Arms Assault. Run up behind enemies, behind their spawn, and get executions. You also can do this in Nuketown 24-7 and any other game mode. Getting kills while injured can be frustrating sometimes. If for those who don't know, statistically, being injured means you have 15% of health or less. You can complete this challenge just through standard game use, or you can go into hardcore game modes, throw a Molotov cocktail down, make sure you do have flak jacket, and run through the Molotov cocktail so you get one instance of damage or like one tick or just like one kind of weird flinch of damage. This will bring you down to below 10 health, and every kill you get in that single life from there on out will count as a kill while injured. To kill enemies while sliding simply requires you to run up to enemies, slide, and kill them. I don't remember what the medal is that you get. I think it's called low blow, but if you get the low blow medal, that is how you know it is one kill towards this challenge. And getting kills while enemies are affected by your stun grenades, smoke grenades, and flash grenades are the last challenge. You can pair this with sliding kills and injured kills very easily. Just make sure the enemy is stunned by a flash grenade or a stun grenade and go up, slide, and kill them. This can also be done in smoke grenade where if you throw a smoke grenade and enemies are chilling within that smoke grenade, kill them while they're in there, you'll get a smoke screen kill and that will count towards this challenge. And that is all the challenges you have for DM Ultra for every single weapon class. Remember, if you ever do end up needing to come back to this video, use the timestamps and the chapters so you aren't here too much longer. One good thing about this year is that DLC weapons can replace any base weapon class. For example, you need a total of five gold assault rifles to get diamond assault rifles. However, it doesn't specify that you have to get the base weapons in the game. You can get DLC weapons gold in replacement of the base game weapons. This means if there's a gun you really hate, and there's a DLC weapon you really like, you can do so. Say for SMGs, you love the MAC-10 but hate the KSP, don't get the KSP gold and get the MAC-10 gold instead to get diamond. This doesn't change the dark matter requirements either. It's super easy. Once you get diamond for that one weapon class, you're ready to go to the next one. And the requirements don't change where you still need nine categories. So once you get assault rifles diamond, even if you don't get a base weapon gold, it still counts and you can still get DM Ultra. Super easy and a really good feature this year for Dark Matter. Well, with all that being said, that is the complete DM Ultra camel guide for Cold War. I will have all the updates in a pinned comment if things drastically change or if better strategies come out. So if you are confused on some of the things you saw, check out the comment section and maybe some things have changed. I hope this guide did help those who want to get DM Ultra and for those who are struggling with it. Leave a like if you did enjoy, dislike if you didn't, there's really no hard feelings. Subscribe for more videos in the future. In the description, there's going to be that social media link for the Discord server, as well as the full Dark Ether and Dark Matter camel playlist for other guides that I will release in the future. And for those weapon specific challenges, I'm about to head out. And if there is one, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.